Hi, I'm Captain Mike, and today we're going to talk about how to make a simple ash glaze. Uh, this is just uh, a little further along on my journey to uh, use all of the local ingredients that I have at my disposal for making arts and crafts, in this case, ceramics. Uh, we've already been through the river clay slip and firing and now uh, I have decided to try to make um, ash glaze out of what I have available starting with this and ending up with these and all of these are made from local river clay it's a red clay it'll fire to uh, cone 10 with a lot of shrinkage. Cone 6 is what I normally glaze at with these. And as you can see, there are different uh, effects depending on, you know, what you, what kind of ashes you use. So, with that said, Let's go take a little walk and I'm going to show you where the uh, journey begins. Well, I start by uh, walking around in the um, woods behind my house looking for whatever tree that I want to use to make the ashes out of. I have gone a little bit beyond using whatever ashes were available and we'll have a little bit more about that later, to trying to use select types of trees and uh, burning them for the ash. Now, what I did yesterday is I selected me two dead standing red cedars. And that's what these are right here. And as you can see, they're very dead. Uh, we'll come back and we'll cut them down later. But uh, I cut them down, there's a bigger one, uh, and drug them up to the fire barrel with my tractor and uh, cut them up. And we have different trees that we will try to find that uh, are dead standing. I like to use deadfalls. I will not cut the green trees down unless I have to. Uh, this one right here is a cherry. Uh, cherry is on my list. There's several dead cherry trees back here that are still standing. Uh, this one is not dead, but it's a good example of what the bark looks like. Sorry about that. I tripped on something. So that's a cherry tree. Find my shoe. Excellent. So we have cherry trees. We have oak trees, willow trees couple of types of oak trees hickory and pecan those are the ones and oh and uh, pine and those are the ones that I will work on later it takes about two days to burn what I need to burn I think that's a poplar we see a great a big cedar tree over there in the back I have lots of cedars to burn so this is where this starts uh, if you don't have um, access to uh, wood like I do uh, you can always uh, burn pallets a lot of those are of those are made out of white oak collect up your pallets tear them up and burn them and that will get you your ash uh, for the project now uh, this is really simple, but you do you do need some tools. In fact, is if you really want to get simple, uh, what I would suggest that you do is get you a couple of bags of charcoal briquettes, burn them. They're usually hickory or pecan or a mixture, but it's close. They're all in the same family. Get your uh, get your uh, uh, charcoal briquettes and uh, burn them to a white powder sift it and go from there so that's where this journey starts from there I drag them up here to uh, uh, the uh, fire barrel 
we have uh, when we sit around during hunting season or whenever anybody wants to sit around and uh, shoot the bull and start a fire that's what this is for and uh, but I, I dragged them up here with my tractor as you can see I messed up the yard but that's okay it'll grow back I have red oak going today it's been going since about eight o'clock this morning I already had a helicopter flying around to see what was on fire uh, hopefully they seen the fire barrel and went away uh, but that will burn I will keep it burning all day long until I burn up a fair amount of this this red oak right here not so much all of it but a good bit of it till I think I have enough ashes so that is where this journey really starts you need ashes okay let me start with a few of the things you're gonna need you're gonna need a wheelbarrow or something metal that you can dump your ashes into uh, I let the ashes sit all night long most of the time they're pretty much uh, pretty much cooled off but you want to make sure that you have something in case there's some live embers that you won't melt like your plastic wheelbarrow. And then you're going to need some sifters. I start with this little baby right here, which is my all purpose uh, clay sifter or whatever. It's a mesh of about like screen wire. And then I go and I use this little thing here. It's about maybe 50 mesh, I think. I made it. Uh, it works great for the powder that I need. Now, if you feel that you need to go to finer meshes, you can buy uh, a set of these things. I just happen to have two. They're part of a set. Well, I'm supposed to be, one of them is a hundred, and one of them is uh, uh, maybe, maybe 70. I don't know. They wouldn't tell you. They called it something else. They didn't call it by the mesh. But you can buy a whole set of these things from quarter inch course all the way up to a hundred mesh. So if you want, you know, that's a bad, that's not a bad investment. If you're going to be sifting a lot of things like glazes and clays and and gold and and stuff, but they also work really good on your ashes. Now they're plastic, so remember what I said about uh, making sure they're cool. So that's what you'll need. You'll sift all of those big chunks out throw them away i throw them in my driveway around my shop and uh pretty much that's it let's go inside and i'm going to show you what you end up with okay okay y'all have seen uh what we started with what we ended with and you've taken a little walk in the woods with me this morning and you've looked at the uh, fire barrel and how I actually burn my wood. Explain to you how I sift it. <clears throat> now, when I sift it, I end up, of course, with that really coarse charcoal that I throwed on the, uh, the road out there. You saw that. But I end up with this. This is the sifted material through what I assume to be about a 50 mesh. Uh, have not tried this through 100 yet. Or 70 but I will next time and you end up with this right here which is very coarse and it's I, you can save it and try it experiment if you want to Doesn't hurt anything I throw it away but this is what we want right here this is the ash now I don't know a lot of technical stuff about ash glazes except what you what goes into it and kind of what happens but it doesn't get any simpler than this ash any kind of ash you want to use it can be wheat straw it can be bamboo it can be oak pine a mixture any kind of any kind that you want it's going to give you a different effect the experts say but uh, i don't know what I'm, that's what i'm doing now now you're going to need some clay to go with this I'm, this recipe that I'm using is an experimental one. 
uh, I'm just going 50-50 and then I will adjust the uh, recipe for more ash and less clay as it progresses. Clay, whatever you have. This is Kentucky Ball. It's white. It'll give you a lighter finish. Kind of like this. This is this is uh, red oak and uh, um, um, some O4, uh, just O4 clay that I had. It was wet. I mean, it was just the kind that you make things out of. <clears throat> I didn't even dry it. I just kind of measured it out 50-50 and did it. This little rascal right here was the first glaze that I did, and it was just come right out of the ashes out of the fire barrel. Boy's been burning all kinds of things in there, and there's aluminum cans, and I had did some pit fire, and they were salt and copper and aluminum foil and every kind of ash you can think of. And it this was fired to cone tin too, and so it it's a little darker. Now back to the clays, you have ball clay, which is white. You have this, uh, I think it's Kentucky red clay, if you want a, uh, a darker uh, glaze. Uh, this is just some 04 slip, just standard low fire slip, bunch of scrap, and you can use it. It fires white. And this is my river clay, which, by the way, went into this was all that messy ashes I was telling you about in river clay. Very first thing that I did, you just mill it up any way that you want to mill it up. Uh, if you put it in with all this stuff and you start to stir it, let it sit, it'll eventually turn to mush anyway. It'll just take a little longer. That is all you need. You need water. You need, it doesn't have to be still, it can be out of your spigot. Um, water, clay, and ash water, clay, and ash. That's all the materials that you are going to need. In this case, just 50-50. There's 8.3 ounces of white ball clay. There's 8.3 ounces of ash. As you can see, there's more volume in the ash. Don't know about the water. It's not important because if you put too much in, you let it, just let it settle and siphon it off. It, well, don't siphon it with your mouth because this stuff's going to cause, it's going to make some type of sodium hydroxide. That's what ashes do when they get in water. Uh, they make potash or whatever you want to call it. But anyway, get the water off if you have too much water. If you don't have enough water and your, and your glaze is too thick, you guys know the routine. Add a little water. You're going to need a blender, my choice, or you can go old school and you can have a spoon. But it's as simple as this. I just happen to have a bunch of these. You don't have to have glass. Uh, my next, second favorite is uh, um, the uh, plastic buckets, the two-gallon plastic buckets that stuff come in. But I happen to have about two dozen of these things that I had put soap in at one time and uh, no longer use them. And here's what I'm going to do, which is going to be real quick. I'm going to just be a short video. I'm just going to dump this in here. I'm going to dump my ashes in there. And stir them up. Now you can use a mask on this. It wouldn't hurt to use a mask. I don't have a mask on, but I'm a dummy. Use a mask. Use your gloves. Use your eye protection. I wear glasses, so I always have eye protection. But you see, it's causing a little dust down there, so yeah, use your mask. Please use your mask. I'm so old. It ain't going to kill me tonight, so no, 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 bleep, no time soon. Uh, stir it up. We won't stir it up. Just horrible, horrible. Now, that's not much water. I have some extra water over here. Pour the water in. Start stirring. See, right quick, that's not going to be enough water. So, you'll pour a little more water in. Just like mixing concrete. Just kind of mix it or plaster. Might have put a little too much water in at that time. Who knows? But now, <clears throat> just because you don't think you have enough water in it, don't worry. If it's still, if it looks a little, if you, let me back up. Don't worry if you think you put too much water in. Let this stuff sit overnight and it will hydrate. There are things in it, especially the clay, that are going to absorb some of your water. 
And you'll have things that'll, that'll float to the top. They'll need to be uh, stirred back in. In essence, that's it. You can take, we won't dirty up my blender because you know, you stick your blender in there and just blend the heck out of it. I'll do that later. And, uh, uh, you know, also label your top <clears throat> so that you'll know because all of it looks alike. All of it looks alike. Now, here's some of the second that I blended up. Uh, or mixed up, excuse me. It is red oak and that 04, uh, it's regular old uh, clay that I was telling you about. You know, it's 04. Uh, and you can see it's about how thick it is. Now, the uh, <clears throat> this stuff here, depending on your clay body, um, you can dip it. You can brush it. You can do whatever you want to do to it. This is a piece I just did a while ago. I dipped one half. I brushed one half. But I can tell you what will happen on this half, on this red river clay. It is so porous, it'll crack. And it'll crack all up. You know, when you fire it up to cone six, it gives it an interesting effect. Uh, but a lot of times I don't want it cracked. So I brush it on, and I put two or three coats on, and, and it, it, uh, it doesn't crack up as much. Uh, now, with that said, let me let me go over a few things. This is an a cone. I would say five, six, seven glaze. I fired it to ten. <clears throat> uh, make sure that I don't know what it'll do. You take all the precautions you need to partake with your kiln. I fire it at cone six. Experiment. You know I will, and see what it'll do at all the other cones. Uh, you can use uh, the clay you use. I don't know what this Kentucky ball is. <clears throat> you know, what it's considered. Uh, but, you know, the clay is not what glosses up. I think the clay holds it in suspension along with some, if, if you wanted to put something else in it, I don't. Uh, but the ash actually is what melts and causes the shiny parts. Shiny parts? It causes the shiny parts uh, when it gets to a certain temperature. It melts. The ash is what does it. Uh, exactly what the ball clay does, I don't really know. That's an ignorance on my part. You guys look it up. I can't do everything. I'm too old. Uh, but that's it. You know, experiment with your with your different ashes or whatever you can get. Uh, be careful with your fire. But that is all you need. I mean, it doesn't get any simpler than river clay with no additives, ashes from whatever you can burn, water out of the spigot, and whatever clay you have available, whatever clay you have available, and you should have some. You're a potter. Mix it up good, let it sit overnight, apply it to some vessel of your choice, stick that rascal in the kill, fire it, and just see what you get. Hey, that is my tutorial, if you will, on making a simple ash glaze. Folks, it don't get no simpler. So, make you some. Enjoy it. Let me know how it come out. If you have comments, you know, put them below. We'll discuss it. Be adult. I will too. And uh, I've really enjoyed making this, and I can't wait to make some more. I'm Captain Mike. I'm out of here.